So, hi everybody, welcome back to the last in our short series of videos regarding this moisture meter. This is the Tramex Concrete X5 Moisture Encounter. And we're going to talk about these accessories during the course of this video, when to use them and how best to use them. So it's likely when you got your kit for this meter that you also got an accessories box as well. And in that accessories box there's a couple of spanners maybe, a um, little depth gauge and some of these. These are sleeves that are used for uh, measuring uh, ERH or equilibrium relative humidity in concrete. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on how to use these in this video and simply because on the Tramex website there is um, their own uh, version of the video that they have on how to install them to the current standard in your particular country. Suffice to say, it is a method that is used for measuring moisture in concrete and here in the UK, um, once these have been installed, they need to be allowed to um, acclimatise for 72 hours according to standard for us to be able to take an accurate reading from them. So from that perspective, we're not going to get into too much discussion on that today. And certainly for non-destructive testing of concrete, I'd refer you back to the first video that I did uh, in how to use the moisture meter. Um, in its normal setup for NDT in concrete. Okay, so we're now going to look at the um, pin probe accessory here. And before we actually um, plug it in and show you what happens, uh, we're just going to look quickly at the menu. So in the menu, um, we press this button here and go down to the pin probe setting. Go into pin probe and we have some options including wood standards, wood species, WME and drywall. For those of you who don't know drywall is the same as plasterboard here in the UK. So what we're going to do is we're going to pre-select WME and we are going to just press the select button and uh, this is going to be the scale that we use when we plug this accessory in. So what we're going to do is we have our pin probe, here we have the lead with the lock uh, connector at the top, insert that, pro that connector, quarter turn um, and then we can see that it is now pre-selected WME, all being well, uh, on that screen and it's now ready for use. It will always go back to the last one that you had used. You can, pre you can use, uh, use the menu button to change uh, which one you're on at any time. So here we have the cap, so we're just going to remove the plastic cap and we have the pin probes. These pin probes are designed for use uh, when you, uh, testing any absorbent structural material, which would include wood, um, MDF maybe, um, plasterboard as we've got a scale for that, that those sorts of materials. And we'd insert those, those pins into the material and um, take our reading from the scale we've selected. Uh, in the demonstration you're going to see shortly, we'll be using the WME scale. So what we need to remember is this is a destructive test and um, we need to be cautious uh, when we're inserting it into materials that um, are potentially going to leave a mark, um, if, things like wallpaper and so on. Uh, just need to be cautious in how we use it. But from that perspective, it will give us a reading on that scale and help us to identify the presence of moisture. So that's the pin probes. Um, we have these long probes as well. So these long probes, of which there are two, interchange with those pins. And very simply, we take a spanner, undo those nuts, swap the pins over, and then we have our long probes, which you're going to see in the video. The long probes themselves, they are designed for use in more dense structural materials. So that would be things like mortar lines in brickwork, brick itself, um, block work, concrete block work, um, those sorts of materials. And you're going to see a particular method of how they're used uh, shortly as we go on to our demonstration. So let's head over to our demonstration area and let's see the different methods of being able to use these accessories. So here we've already attached the um, WME pins and we're going to insert these pins into this bottom base rail here of a stud wall which has got plasterboard just above it. So this is where the skating board would normally sit in this particular property. 
So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a control reading from what we know is a dry piece of wood. And as you can see, that's currently reading around about 12.7% WME on that scale. What you noticed was when we inserted the pins, we put the pins in line with the grain of the wood. So what we're going to do is go to the suspected area here, which we believe is damp, and we're now going to insert those pins into that wood. And as you can see, we're currently reading around about 27% WME. So that indicates that we have a level of moisture there that requires some attention. So that's a simple and easy way to use the pin probes um, when we're measuring uh, absorbent materials such as wood and we can use a similar principle we've just got the plasterboard here where we know it's slightly damp and we're getting a, a moisture reading there of 47.8 so this area requires further investigation as we can see so what we're about to do now is just demonstrate how we're going to use the long pin probes this meter is currently set to reference scale which is why it's catching the back of my hand and uh, we're just going to attach the long pin probe um, by its connector and as you can see uh, it's just touching the floor at the minute so that's now connected as you can see it's automatically gone to WME so that's the scale we'd pre-selected for the purposes of using um, these pins so this method can be used on any um, dense structural material that you want to measure the moisture content in or the WME um, in and um, that would be things like mortar lines in brickwork, brick itself, um, breeze blocks and so on. So what we've got here is a series of holes. Um, we've drilled them at a different depths. So we're going to take um, our first reading here from the 20 millimeter depth just to see how far the moisture is actually penetrated in. And as we can see, we're currently getting a WME reading of 41, sorry, 36%, my mistake. So that's up to 20 millimetres depth in that mortar line. And now we're going to take a reading in the 40 millimetre depth. And as we can see, we are getting a maximum reading uh, well, between 90 and 100% WME. So what that's suggesting to us is that the moisture is penetrating from the opposite side towards the front. And if, conversely, the 20 millimetre holes were wetter than the 40 millimetre holes, then the moisture was not penetrated all the way in and the movement is from this side. So from this method of um, moisture profiling in dense structural materials, what we can actually do is determine A, how wet it is, and B, um, how far the moisture is penetrated in and which direction it's traveling. So the last accessory we're going to talk about on this particular video is the humidity probe ad adapter or attachment. So uh, we're just going to remove the dust cap from the uh, inbuilt humidity probe and we're just going to switch this on. Now in fairness this uh, probe is already um, calibrated, uh, equalised with the atmosphere in this particular room. But the results of which can be seen on this bottom bar. Uh, we have temperature, um, we have relative humidity, we have DP for dew point. Um, dew point is um, the point at which condensation occurs. Um, and then lastly, we have um, specific humidity, and in this particular scale, um, if you remember the first video, I, I went through the different scales and set, setting the temperature. Um, this is the specific humidity in grams per kilo. So this is currently being taken from the, the ambient air, and uh, we can use this as a comparison um, for anything that we intend to test. So. This is the probe that comes in the kit. It comes in a little silver foil packet. Um, when not in use, I'd advise you to put that back into the silver foil packet just to protect it from any dust or debris. That simply fits on to the end of our um, probe, our hygro eye probe. And um, that is now ready for use. And we would now attach the probe to the meter and as you can see it flicks straight over to um, the screen for the hygro eye probe and we've got a dual display here so we have temperature we have relative humidity dew point temperature 
our condensation surface condensation temperature and of course our GPK. This one's reading marginally high at the moment because it's been uh, stored outside in the cold. Uh, sorry, in the what? So inside in the warmth. Um, this, on the other hand, is our bottom scale. And what will happen is, in a relatively short period of time, in about five, maybe ten minutes at the most, these two will actually start to equalise, and you'd expect to get pretty much the same readings across the top section and the bottom section. So, when would you actually use this probe in this configuration? So, simply, if you have a void or cavity in a building structure that you need to compare the cavity to the ambient air, so long as you can get to that probe into that cavity, you can check the difference between the two. Very simple and straightforward. So this is very useful. So cavity wall, for example, um, if that had moisture in it, you could, if you get access to it, a 16 millimeter hole drilled in would be sufficient. And you can measure the grams per kilo or the relative humidity and compare it to the indoor or outdoor environment for, depending on whatever purpose you're using it for and that will help determine whether or not um, there is any cause for concern or what your future actions would be you can also use it on um, things like subfloors where you've got a timber suspended floor you could put the probe in underneath the floor and uh, measure it or compare the ambient in the room compared to the subfloor um, or the subfloor to the outside air to determine whether or not there's any further action or cause for concern. So that's what that humidity probe is for. Um, and as I say, remember, always store that in your um, foil packet when not in use. Just another note, um, this particular probe is designed to actually be used in the yellow sleeve I showed at the beginning of the video. Um, and it is actually detachable for that purpose. Um, so if you're not using it for that purpose, just be cautious. Um, I have on one occasion knocked one off accidentally and had to go rooting around underneath the floor for it. I did find it eventually. But uh, make sure you look after that and don't, don't drop it. These can also be calibrated and um, or calib checked for calibration um, and you can get a separate kit for that um, and I advise you to, to look on the Tramex website should you want to um, look at those further. So. That was your introduction to using this moisture meter, the uh, Tramex Concrete X5, along with its accessories. And it, hopefully you can see how versatile this moisture meter is when used with the right equipment. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.